Yeah, I mentioned refining a little bit earlier. So here's a like history of refining since 1965. What we have is refining capacity on the top and then consumption in, in the blue line. And the red line is actually refining throughput, which has only been, uh, which is somewhat less than, than consumption. So the difference between these two is to my mind, uh, and I'm, I'm, I don't know how much renewables were being produced back in the early 80s, but the, the um, increase in production of renewable fuel from agricultural sources, like uh, sugar and, and corn, means that we still get to meet the consumption figure, but refinery throughput is somewhat less, because refinery throughput is thinking about refining fossil fuels. So go back to the early time, and uh, when, when 1973 is the key date here, and we see the two are very close together, but there's no, um, there's no volatility, there's just steady growth, both in uh, refining capacity and in global demand. I'm just thinking, you know, what, what was happening in this stage, do you think, of the, of the refining or the, the global oil business? Um, and 1973 is like a clue here, because 1973, there was a big event that changed things. The oil majors were in control uh, up until that time. So they, they largely controlled all the, the supply of um, refining crude, uh, creating products and delivering products to the market. So they had a good idea of what demand was. And so they could match demand with refining capacity because they controlled the market. Um, 1973 came the oil crisis, so lots of things were going on, but primarily Egypt and Syria tried to take the land back that Israel had taken from them in the 1967 war, around the feast of Yom Kippur in 1973. Well, it's a Jewish festival when supposedly the, is, Israel was not so alert uh, in defending its country. So there was a big flare-up of geopolitical tension surrounding Israel and Syria and uh, Egypt. Um, and, and what happened then is the Saudis said anyone who supports Israel will not supply them oil. And so there was an embargo on exports from Saudi Arabia to the countries that supported Israel that lasted for 45 days. Um, and at the end of that time period, the Saudis said, okay, we'll sell you oil, but we're now in control, we're going to set the price, and they effectively nationalized the assets of Exxon, I guess is the main uh, company that was operating in Saudi Arabia, and said so they're now our assets, we're in, you can, you, you know, we're in control of uh, what's going on. So the OPEC countries collectively took over the assets from the international oil companies. Oil prices went up enormously from $3 to $13 a barrel, and global demand dropped, and hence the uh, consumption is not going up this steady line of growth, it's, it's dropped. So what do we have is we still have the build out of refining capacity because it takes a while to build a refinery, and so now we have a big uh, gap between consumption and refining, so there's overcapacity in the refining business. So the refiners are chasing a relatively small market and, and they want to operate at their best capacity. They're producing too much oil products, and therefore everything's going down. The product prices are dropping, and the crude oil prices are dropping, uh, or are under pressure. Uh, then we arrive at the end of the decade. We have a revolution in Iran, and then the Iran-Iraq uh, war happens, and uh, six and a half million barrels a day are taken off the market oil prices become really strong. And so that very strong oil prices cause consumption to drop again because oil becomes very expensive. And we have this huge gap again in, in oversupply. But slowly, demand picks up over time and there's not so much excess refining capacity. So the market settles down again. Uh, and I think the, the next big uh, major hit, I would say, well, 2008, we can see here, 2008, we have a, a dip uh, in, in activity. And so through 2008, 
we've, we've seen expansion in the global economy, a very strong expansion, especially from Southeast Asia um, in the, the years from like 2000 to 2008. Uh, and the concern is that refiners won't have the capacity to deliver the, um, the product that the, that the consumers want. And then we have a financial crisis and uh, 2008, 2009, and we have economic contraction and we have another shock. So consumption drops again. Um, and then we have the previous 10 or 20 years or so, or 10 or 15 years, um, demand is growing and then we have the pandemic. Um, but we have quite a big difference between refinery throughput. So here's products being produced from, from crude oil and uh, consumption is on the blue line. But I think a lot of that is being made up of the increased supply coming from the renewable sector. So um, there's, there's another sort of big factor I would suggest is uh, refining capacity. Is there too much refining capacity? Are the refiners competing with each other if demand is falling away? Um, so one thing is, it's very expensive to build a refinery that costs a lot, a lot of money. And one would expect crude oil is not worth very much. Products are worth a lot. So you'd expect crude oil to be relatively cheap. Products have a really expensive uh, high price. But what happens is crude oil has the high price and products are just a little bit added on, which I always think is quite, uh, quite a curious thing. And partly the reason for that is that there's very often overcapacity in the refining business and refiners are competing with each other to sell products into a market where there are too many products. Uh, and so the refining margin gets squeezed down to just operating cost. And um, ref the refining business can be a very tough business to be in. So it goes through some phases of being absolutely fantastic with wonderful margins but a lot of the time, there's overcapacity and refiners are, uh, their, their margins are driven down to just their operating costs.